<laughs> I feel flustered. <laughs> Am I red? Yeah. <laughs> Very. Hey, my name is Iman Gadji, and these are my 10 essentials. So my first essential is an iPhone and these are two very beat up ones. I've never broken my phone before. Then I came to Cape Town where we're recording this and this happened to my phone. But why do you have two? Um, good question. Uh, this is the phone where no one can reach me so no one knows my number. I don't have WhatsApp, I don't have anything on this. This literally just has Uber, Spotify, Audible, and just some other stuff that I need to survive. So this phone is what I use from like 9 p.m. until obviously I sleep and I turn it off, and then all the way through the morning, and then at lunchtime I turn it on this one and get bombarded by messages and instantly gives me a headache. So, Next thing is Cologne. This is Bleu de Chanel by Chanel. And um, yeah, I take one of these wherever I go, probably spray myself like three, four times a day because I always <laughs> got to be smelling like Knightsbridge on a summer's day. In fact, I always bring two with me wherever I go. As you can see, that one's running out. So I always got to have a fresh batch with you <laughs> wherever you go. Smelling clean. So essential number three for me is a good watch wherever I go. Right now I'm rocking the Rolex Hulk. I actually picked up this watch and for the first like three, four months, maybe wore it like twice. I'm actually in Cape Town right now and everyone told me Cape Town is super dangerous, this, that. So I didn't bring any of my nice watches with me. After a month here, one of my employees flew out and uh, visited me. We had some work to do and I just couldn't live without a nice watch anymore. So. Yeah, I got him to bring out this bad boy right here. Wait, are all your watches that expensive? Uh, funnily enough, this is one of my cheaper watches, so anyone that knows a little bit more about me, I have uh, two Patek Philippe's, I have the 5711 Nautilus, I have the rose gold Aquanaut, I've got uh, two APs, uh, I've got maybe like 10 Rolexes, I've got the Hulk, Pepsi, Batman, uh, Daytona, but I gave that to my mom. Uh, I have a 60th anniversary day date, I think I'm missing out a few here, but I also have some cheaper watches. Yeah, I brought these two along. This is a Timex Expedition. Uh, one of my client's boyfriend actually gave this to me as a gift, so shout out Sal if you're watching this. The other one I have right here is another Timex, actually. This is the Timex Q 1978 reissue, I believe, and uh, a special lady in my life got this for me, so I was grateful for her for that. So yeah, I have like 16, 17 watches right now. It's definitely a hobby, a very expensive hobby, but yeah, you know, it's passion of mine, that's for sure. But how much are all your watches worth? Um, I think between all of them, uh, market value, it's uh, around $450,000. <laughs> Essential number four is a pair of sneakers. I'm gonna take these off as well. <laughs> All right, so I like my shoes. For me, the thing is, you know, if you have a good pair of shoes and you got a nice watch, which are two things that I always make sure I have, then to be honest, you can kind of wear whatever you want in between and you're still gonna look fly as shit. So, these are my favorite sneakers, hands down. These are uh, L'Envons. I have three pairs of these, and uh, I've worn a black pair of these with a suit before. You can dress it down, you can dress it up. If you could give me one pair of sneakers for the rest of my life, I'm going for these. These are the Air Force Jordan. You have no idea. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Too. As you can tell from my lineup, like I have a certain style. I think I'm very European in a lot of senses, so. This is not really my style normally, but I saw these and I just thought they were fly as hell. Yeah, I wear these with like, you know, longer black trousers, just a regular t-shirt, throw on my uh, rose gold AP or a 60th anniversary day date. And once again, they're looking fly as shit. These right here are Laura Piana Summer Walks. 
Jeopardy beat up one of my good friends. Her and I were having a heated discussion about Laura Piana Summer Walks versus Long Vons. And I was saying like, these are the ultimate shoes. And uh, she convinced me to get a pair. I got a pair. They're comfy as hell. Plus, in my opinion, will these still be like cool in like three, four years? I don't think so. Like five years ago, you definitely weren't seeing like 21 year olds, 22 year olds walking around with a pair of these and people going like, oh yeah, those are fly. So I think these are more timeless, but for now, funnily enough, these are actually kind of like a cool shoe to have, but sometimes I dress them up, sometimes I dress them down. These right here are a brand that I didn't understand for so long. These are Golden Goose. You pay 400 pounds for dirty shoes. Now I will say they have become a little bit more dirty since wearing them. And you know, I thought about, it, I was like, man, I should probably clean these. Then I realized you never have to. You literally pay for them to be dirty. So another thing is most of the Golden Goose shoes, they have like a small sole or whatever. If you're, in my opinion, if you're six foot or above, small soles with shoes that have like lace up, it ends up making your feet look huge. So these are the high stars from Golden Goose. I like this like little stripe right here. Don't have them on the other side. So these are my sneakers or at least the ones that I've brought traveling with me. I have probably like 10, 15 more pairs back in London. So essential number five is a film camera. Now this right here is a Contax T3. This is pretty much the most desirable film camera or, or point and shoot camera out there right now. And it's pretty simple. You just point and shoot and it does everything else and the photos come out incredible. And um, this is awesome. Like when I'm at the club or at a party, actually someone brought this to one of my parties and I looked at it and I was like, that's cute. Like that's a, that's a cute little contraption, not knowing how expensive these things are and just how incredible they are at taking photos. And the next time I saw him, he actually came with like a packet like this and he pulled out all these photos and uh, he handed one to me and I was like, yo, this is, this is fire. So yeah, I'd bring this thing out everywhere with me, parties, clubs, just out and about when I'm having food with friends. And it's, it's nice to capture just some, some moments here and there on film and even better just to, you know, get them printed out when you get them developed and, and hand them off to a friend. Now, once I started using this thing, I got into film photography and uh, this is the, this is the big daddy. If I need a guaranteed shot, the contacts pretty much always does it for me. This, this is a little bit more complex. The photos from here are incredible, but there's no flash. So this is a Leica M6 TTL. And uh, once I started shooting with this, I got a little bit more into film photography. Now this doesn't have a flash. This is full manual, as well as this complicated sort of range finder to actually pull focus on this thing. And long story short, you can't really hand this off to a friend and get him to take a good photo of you. Some of my friends do know how to work a camera and yeah, we just get some beautiful photos from this. This is my versatile go-to and this is if, you know, I'm doing something a little more professional or maybe doing something for my clothing line, then I use this. So this is a Kindle. And uh, what can I say? I am an avid reader. I've been reading uh, for four years. I read a book a week. I think it's a little bit of a fetish of mine, but I love the smell of new books. Is that just me? <laughs> that is the one thing I miss about having uh, physical books, but this travels with me everywhere. This is a top of the line Kindle. Don't mean to flex on you, but reason I got this and reason I love this is the pushers right here, uh, rather than just like a tappy screen. And I am the weirdo at day clubs and beach clubs who is in the pool reading alone on their Kindle because this thing is waterproof. And I thought that was not really a big deal. But when you're at a pool party and you got to finish a book in a pinch, you'll thank me. What book are you reading now? <laughs> Do you actually want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel flustered. <laughs> Am I red? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very. Yeah. So number seven is this right here. And this is an aura ring. Now I wear this thing at night and this is actually an old client of mine. We worked with them for over six months. And at the time of signing this client, I was actually already a customer of theirs. So it was a big like, 
fanboy moment for me. Yeah, you know, it was my nerdy side coming out. So this thing tracks my sleep, my REM, my deep, time in bed, latency, my HRV, my average resting heart rate, a bunch of cool stuff. And I put this thing on when I sleep and uh, in the morning I wake up, I check my stats and every day on my team call, I actually have all of our Aura stats pulled into like a Aura team feature that they have. And I compare stats with my employees, which I've thought about before. And I think it's a really cool thing to do as a company. Also part of me is like, that's total invasion of privacy and data. Like I remember there was this one time with my product manager where I saw he went to bed at 3 a.m. and it was a Wednesday, so I could kind of get the gist. <laughs> Aura ring, great for tracking your sleep, great for spying on your employees. So number eight is this right here, which is the Gadgy hoodie. So they say that if you want something right, do it yourself. And that's what I did with hoodies. I am not really a big fan of hoodies. I don't really wear hoodies that much until I created my own clothing line. So shameless plug, this is Gadgy, my bespoke clothing line. And by the time this is launched, I don't even know if these will still be available. We just did the last restock. Now this is actually the prototype and I still wear the prototype. I think it's just cause I have so many good memories in this thing. Like I've closed clients in this thing. I've gone on dates in this thing. Like I've traveled to multiple continents in this thing. And for me, one of the biggest reasons that I never got into hoodies is the hood. If you were gonna call something a hoodie, then you best believe the hood is good. Sorry, it heated, but look, here's my point, right? If you wear most hoodies, they sit, they sit like this. It makes your head look like an egg. Who wants to look like this? Like, look, I wanna be able to pop in my AirPods, right? And put some shades on and walk down the street and not look ridiculous because my head makes me look like I'm a Russian babushka. So yeah, this thing is beat up, this thing is worn out, like, and this thing is literally the first prototype of this. But I have so much love for this thing, honestly. As odd as it sounds, and especially when I'm traveling, like, I just feel safe in this thing. I put my hood on, and I just feel as though I'm in my own world. I just can't live without this thing. So, next thing, I got my travel accessories. First things first, I got my backpack. And second, I also have to have my toiletry bag. We'll start with this one first. Now, both of them are Louis Vuitton, and to be entirely honest, like, I hate anything with a pattern or print. I have gotten so many compliments on this thing. You know when you just buy something and you walk away and you don't have any sort of uh, buyer's remorse or anything like that? You're like, that's a good purchase. And then people keep complimenting you on it. And every single time you get a compliment on it, you just like, your ego inflates and you're like, that was a smart decision. Like, I'm glad I spent $4,000 on that bag. But yeah, that's the case with this. Um, it's the like low key Louis Vuitton print. I don't know what they actually call it, but um, I use this thing primarily when I travel. Day to day, I don't really take a backpack with me anywhere, but at the moment I'm not really traveling, so let's see what I've got inside here. I have an executive club silver membership from British Airways. One of the downsides of living in London is you have to fly British Airways, one of the worst airlines on earth, hate British Airways. And yeah, you don't really have any options. Uh, in America, I think you got like a lot more options if you're flying within the States, et cetera, et cetera. When you're flying within Europe, pretty much all the airlines are just kind of crap. And the worst thing is the business class for every single airline is literally just like, rather than a three, three configuration, it's like a two, two and you're still in the same seat. I got that, and then I also have a priority pass, um, which I got with my Amex. Ah, actually, this could have been another essential. This is my Mont Blanc pen. Any of you guys who are entrepreneurs and you know had a good month or whatever, go reward yourself with one of these bad boys. I think I first bought myself one of these like three years ago, and once you buy one, you just can't go back. They got some crazy, crazy designs. Like some of them go up to like $1,500 or whatever. This is one of the cheaper ones. I think it's like 400 bucks. But yeah, just writing on this thing is, is plush. It's nice. So yeah, long story short, this is my travel bag. This has gone to many, many a country with me. And uh, all in all, I just think it looks classy. I love it. The design and the feel and the quality of it, uh, it's amazing. And obviously some people recognize the print. They know it's Louis Vuitton, but a lot of people have asked me like, yo, where's that bag from? And that's just kind of how I like to move. I like to be low key most of the time. So um, yeah, definitely a good purchase. So polar opposite of that is this. Now this is a toiletry bag and funny story around this. Just in general, I love fashion. I like to make sure that everything around me looks aesthetic. Just everything from having an aesthetic pen to having an aesthetic camera to having an aesthetic watch to having an aesthetic, just anything. I just like things to look nice. And I like them to be done with a touch of class as well. So I have this backpack. I got my custom wallet. I have this like 
like laptop case. It's not actually a laptop case from Goyard, like custom with my company initials on it and, and customized and this and that. And that's like one of those like A4 paper holder things that I just use a laptop case. So I have kind of like my dream set up in all those senses. And then when it came to toiletries, I was just using like a five pound, like really crappy plasticky, just, just black container thing. That or the really nice amenity bags that you get in first class Emirates. A little soft flex there again. <laughs> that is true, I, I do fly economy now. Uh, I made a pledge to myself in 2020 that I will only fly economy from now on just because I think things in life that you get a lot of enjoyment from and you know they mean a lot to you, go out, spend as much as you want. You know, like, why do you work so hard? I just realized that like flying first class and business class, it just, it doesn't give me too much enjoyment to be honest. Like most of the time when I'm flying, unless it's genuinely for business, like I land in a country and that same day or the next day I'm with a client or I'm doing something pertaining to my business directly, I don't really sleep in planes. Most of the time I'm reading my Kindle or I'll catch up on some Netflix on my iPad. Well, actually that's a lie. The iPad was a gift to myself in order to make economy easier to get through. So that's a little bit of a lie there, but the iPad does make it a little easier. I can just download Netflix on there. But long story short, my mom knew that, you know, I had all these nice aesthetic things, but my toiletry bag was a shambles. So she actually bought me this for Christmas. And uh, yeah, ever since my toiletries have a good home, have a good shelter. To be honest, I wish they had this print on the toiletries bag, but the toiletries bag, you know, like, to be honest, no one really sees it. So it's a good shape, good material, good quality. I'm not the biggest fan of the checkered print, but as I said, basically no one sees it. So all in all, mom, if you're watching this, Thank you. So number 10 is this right here, which is my Goyard uh, card holder. For all you ladies out there, if you ever go on a date and the bill comes and your date pulls out one of those aggressive, chunky wallets, you know, the ones where they have like receipts in there and they have like cash in there and like 40 different gift cards or like loyalty reward programs. Run, do not trust those men. So instead I like to pack light. I only have like, I think like seven, eight cards in here. I never carry around cash. I just don't really see the point in this day and age, but um, this has my initials and the name of my agency right here, IAG. And yeah, it's funny because in the last bit, I literally said that I don't like prints. And then here I am having something with a print, but I don't know, it's just something about Goyard. I just don't feel it's been ruined as bad as like brands like Louis Vuitton, like their standard print and uh, Gucci. Whew. I just despise Gucci. And this is coming from someone who, when they first started making money, I actually, the only thing I've ever bought from Gucci, I had a Gucci card holder, just generally because I like the little snake they have, but those are those are for grown boys. Men, they have uh, card holders like this. I was also thinking of getting the Louis Vuitton one, same print as my backpack, uh, super clean. Reason I went for Goyard is because I got a matching laptop case, which I've, I've used like three times. Why don't you use the laptop case? Oh, okay, that sounds so pretentious. So the laptop case from Goyard doesn't fit in my Louis Vuitton backpack. So I have a 15, actually I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So that fits into my Louis Vuitton backpack fine. But if I then put it in the Goyard laptop case, which is actually just a, uh, like a paper stack holder thing, um, it doesn't fit in my, in my backpack. So that's why I don't use it. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this has been 10 things Iman Gadget can't live without. Thanks for sticking around and listening to my essentials. Boom, I think we're done.